Hello and welcome to another slice of Daily Bread. I am so glad that you have joined me today. Now today we're going to take a look at what it means to seek the Lord. But before we begin, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for your loving watch care over each one of us. And Lord, I pray that as we open and study your word here today on Daily Bread, that your spirit will bless us and guide us. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Andrea was headed to the Illinois State Fair. Why was she headed there? Well, she was headed there with her six kids because two of her kids had won prizes at the county fair, and now they were moving up to the state fair. And since they lived a ways away from where the fair was being held, they had decided that they would travel most of the way the day before they would get in a motel and spend the night there and then travel the last 30 minutes or so to the fair the next morning. So they're in the car, in the van, headed to the Illinois State Fair. Well, unfortunately, it was getting close to dark and as they're driving, they hear a bang come from the engine of the van. And they pull off to the side of the road and of course Andrea's like, oh no, what are we gonna do? She's confused, she doesn't know how to handle the situation. Now this is a day long before cell phones. And so she saw a truck stop just a little ways down the road. So all seven of them, Andrea and her six kids, walked to the truck stop where they found a pay phone. Some of us can remember what those are, pay phones. And she tried call a calling a towing company, but no one picked up. And now she's even more confused as to what to do. But there was a hotel across the street from that truck stop and so they went over there to get a motel night stay for the night and as they walked in the clerk said well it's the state fair and so the hotel is usually booked up pretty solid but they did have one cancellation and she asked if they wanted that room now when she quoted the price Andrea was like uh she had enough money in her pocket for that specific hotel room but that's all the money that she had with her see she had brought money for the hotel stay and then some extra spending money for the fare but here in this scenario she was going to spend all of it on the hotel stay the clerk noticed the puzzled look and it looked like she said you know it looks like you're dealing with a lot. How about I lower the price a little bit? And so they were able to get the room for a little bit cheaper. So they were m very happy with that. Now, after they got the kids kind of the bed to bed, Andrea and her oldest son walked back to where the van was. They figured they'd get a few things to take with them there in, in the hotel. And as they're sitting in the van, Andrea's sitting in the driver's seat and she's not sure what to do. And so she decides to pray to the Lord and ask for his help. And as soon as she said amen, she felt this impression start the car. And she's like, why should I do that? <laughs> the van doesn't work. <laughs> the engine exploded. It's not gonna work. But the voice came again, start the engine. And so she started the car up. It started right up and she was able to drive to the hotel. That was great, she was happy for that. And so they spent the night there at the hotel and the next morning she went back out with her son and they popped the hood open and they looked in and the fuse box was a melted mess. There was wires, it was a disaster. They could tell that this car needed some serious help. But she got the same impression, start the car. And so she started the car, it started right up. Huh, she thought, well, she praised the Lord that the, the van was working, but now they had a decision to make. Should they continue on to the state fair or because of their dire situation, should they just head back home? And Andrea felt it would be a disservice to her kids who had done all that work on their science projects to skip the fair. And so they went a little bit further and went to the fair and they had a great time. One of the kids got a grand prize for their project and they did all the things that you normally do at the fair, see the animals, eat fair food, ride some rides. They had a great day, but then it was time to head home. And Andrea wasn't sure if the van would get them home. But once again, she prayed 
and she started the car up and they got out on the freeway 40 45 50 55 60 sounded good everything was great she was pleased but she said i'm not gonna i'm not gonna test things i'm going to travel for 20 minutes and then we're gonna sit by the road for 20 minutes and let the engine cool off and then we're gonna go for another 20 minutes and then we're gonna sit for 20 minutes and ch they did that all the way home and finally at about two o'clock in the morning they pulled into the driveway and of course as you can probably guess the van died as they pulled into the driveway and it spent several weeks in the shop getting everything fixed up but Andrea was so grateful for to the Lord of how he had kept her and her family safe on that trip you know there's a story that I we find in second Chronicles chapter 20 that I take like to take a look at here on Daily Bread. Somebody else that felt a dire situation and didn't know what to do. So we're going to start in verse number one of Second Chronicles chapter 20. And here's what it says. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from behind the sea from Syria, and they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is En Gedi. Now I'm sure for King Jehoshaphat, this is quite a scary situation. He's got three plus big armies all combined coming after him. And the kingdom of Judah, they don't have the men of war to come out and meet this army. They're going to get slaughtered basic, based on the size. So I'm sure he's a little bit spooked. But notice how King Jehoshaphat responds when this messenger comes to him with this scary situation. Verse number three says, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to, to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. So what does King Jehoshaphat do? He calls all of Judah together and they ask of the Lord. They seek the Lord here when they are facing troublous times. So that's the right person to call, because you think about it. If you have trouble with your car, like Andrea did, who are you gonna call? You're probably gonna call a mechanic, right? If you're having a plumbing issue with the house, well, if you're renting, you're gonna call your landlord, but if you own the house, you're gonna call a plumber, you're gonna call the expert, the individual that knows how to take care of the problem. And so King Jehoshaphat doesn't know of anybody else other than the Lord that can take care of this problem. We read in Isaiah 55 verse 6 where it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. So King Jehoshaphat knew that the Lord was near and the Lord could help him through this situation. And let's skip down a few verses and read part of Jehoshaphat's prayer to the Lord. And verse 12, it says, O our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. I think there's a key there in Jehoshaphat's prayer, admitting that we need help. When you have trouble with the car, that's when you call the mechanic. You know that you've got a problem, so you reach out to the Lord in this situation with King Jehoshaphat. So he admits the problem. He knows that he doesn't have the solution to the problem, but he says, Lord, our eyes are upon you. You've got this. So what's God's response? Well, let's read that in verse number 15. And he said, this is God, Listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. I think that's a key right here. King Jehoshaphat doesn't know how to solve this problem. But God is telling him, you don't need to solve the problem. 
I've got this. The battle belongs to God. He's the one that's going to fight the battle. So King Jehoshaphat doesn't really need to worry about it. He needs to give his over to God. And that's what he's done in his prayer. He's given it over to God. And God says, I got this. So then he gives them a battle plan. He said, this is how we're going to do it. Verse 16, tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord is with you. I think that's important. God says he's with you. He gives them a battle plan. But notice that the plan does seem a little strange, not something that you would normally do. But this is what God has given them. And then, of course, we're going to notice not only does he give them a plan, he says you need to do X, Y, Z. These are the things that they need to do. So we need to let God take care of the situation, but we also need to realize that we have a part to play as well. Verse 20 and 21 of Second Chronicles says, So they arose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who stood to sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. So yes, we do have a part to play. And so they went out to meet this army. They knew that the Lord said that they wouldn't have to deal with it. Now, King Jehoshaphat does something a little bit strange here. What does he do? He puts the singers in the front. Now, now, now that just seems like a weird, strange battle plan. You think of um, the Battle of Jericho when the children of Israel came across the Jordan. They were entering the Promised Land. Their first big conquering was Jericho. And what plan does the Lord give them there? To march around the city and not say anything. That's just a weird, strange plan. But Notice when they follow what God had said, then good things happen. So in this scenario, King Jehoshaphat puts the singers in the front and they're going out forward singing and praising the Lord. And of course, the Lord is going with them. The Lord is going ahead of them. And so we read what happens next in verse 22. Now, when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So this is interesting. They just attacked themselves and they... When the children of Israel got to the battlefield, they just found three dead armies. That's interesting. And of course, it took them three full days to collect the spoils of that battle. But the Lord kept his promise. They didn't have to do anything. They just had to go out to the battle. And when they got there, everything was taken care of. So, of course, they spent three days collecting the spoil, and we read in verse number 26, And on the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Berica, for there they blessed the Lord, and therefore the name of that place was the valley of Berica until this day. So the valley of Berica actually means the valley of blessing. So they're blessing the Lord. They spent three days collecting the spoil, and then they bless the Lord for what he had done. So... Likewise, when we seek the Lord, when he comes through for us, what should we do? We should have a prayer of thanksgiving and be thankful for the victory that God has wrought through us. So we need to seek the Lord. We need to seek the Lord for his wisdom in each one of our lives. 
He knows what's best for you, and he knows what's best for me. Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2 says, If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on this earth. So, if we are seeking God, then quite frankly, we're seeking the spiritual things in this life. See, we want to be seeking the Lord while we're on this earth. If we're seeking Him on this earth, then we will find it very easy and pleasant to seek Him when we are in heaven. Because I don't feel that if we're going on a completely different direction, that when the Lord comes, He's just going to flip a switch. And from there, He's going to say, you're now seeking the Lord. If we are truly seeking the things after this world, then when the Lord comes back, He's going to allow us to do just that. So I encourage you today here on Daily Bread to seek the Lord, spend some time with him in his holy word. Let's, let's close with prayer. Lord, thank you so much for your blessing and how you worked in Andrea's life, how you worked in King Jehoshaphat's life as well there with the kingdom of Judah. And Lord, I pray that each one of us can seek you as well as we are wanting to have a relationship with you so that when you return in the clouds of heaven, we can go home and have an eternal relationship with you as well. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me for Daily Bread today. I hope you are blessed, and I really do want to leave you with a promise that comes from God's Word. And today's promise comes to us from Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Isn't that a wonderful promise? To that when we seek the Lord, He will direct the paths of our lives. That's a great promise. And you know there's lots more promises that can be found in God's Word. And I encourage you, as always, to pick up God's Word, spend some time reading and studying its sacred pages today. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Bread today. I hope you are blessed, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Until then, so long. Thank you.